the founder of AWLO, Dr. Elisha Atai, our chief host, Senator Donzella James, parliamentarians here present, all chief executives and heads of institutions, he for she champions in the house, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Distinguished participants and honorable members, today I feel honored to stand before you to share what is critical to women. I thank Dr. Elisha Atai for inviting me to be one of the keynote speakers at this conference. I could not be physically present due to circumstances beyond my control, but our team from the warm heart of Africa, Malawi, will represent us well. Before I continue, as we all know, we are living in a challenging time of COVID-19. We have all been affected by losing our loved ones for good. Parliament of Malawi has not been spared on this. We have lost eight members of parliament, two of whom were women. May every soul that has succumbed to COVID-19 rest in peace. Distinguished participants and honorable members, Shelley Sandberg, one of the strongest forces behind women representation, once said, and I quote, we need women at all levels, including the top, to change the dynamic, reshape the conversation, to make sure women's voices are heard and heeded, not overlooked and ignored, end of quote. I have started with this famous quote because it sets the tone for the African Women in Leadership Organization conference. This conference has brought together African women and women of African descent. These women are in political leadership like myself and are all parliamentarians, executives, professionals, and are all women leaders in their own capacity. We are living in a world where over 52% are women. We can no longer afford to allow women remain silent or absent where decisions are made. We strongly need their voices so that women can occupy their rightful places in society. This can only be achieved if women are around the tables to decide on issues regarding healthcare, systems, education, agriculture, infrastructure, energy, etc. Distinguished participants and honorable members, it pains me when I realize that women are all or are over 52% of the world's population, yet they are underrepresented and voiceless. Parliament of Malawi has made a lot of strides in this. The representation on women has increased with time. And we feel this is an achievement, but we still can do more. The world needs more and more women to speak up for their substantive matters. Melinda Gates once said, women speaking up for themselves and for those around them are the strongest forces we have to change the world, end of quote. We need you women in this room to change this world. Thank you, Dr. Tai, for being behind us women. You are a force to reckon with. In order for us to achieve our goals as women, we need women that are capacitated and are well represented in the tables where decisions are made. Women need to move from home, private arenas, to the public where decisions regarding everyone's welfare are made. Distinguished participants and honorable members, coming to the main theme of the conference, why women representation matters, one critically question arises, who will best represent my interests? I think this is a question that all of us should be asking ourselves. Who will represent my interest? These are always circumstances where I have entrusted someone to take decisions on my behalf. I will feel safer if the person representing me is from my background or has lived experiences like me because I know that by sharing similar interests and preferences, the one representing me will push my agenda forward. 
People with shared socioeconomic characteristics have similar preferences and are likely going to make substantive representation where an opportunity arises. This is what makes me a strong believer of women representation to support the 52% of the world's population. I would like to give you an example of Malawi Parliament. In the early 90s, Parliament of Malawi had only 5% representation of members of Parliament. But with time, it has risen to 23%. But the question that we want to ask is, what has that rise done? What change has that brought? Immediately, the numbers of women representation increased in the Parliament of Malawi. We have seen a lot of laws, a lot of uh, bills, policies that favor women being enacted because the women members of parliament were able to lobby with the male members of parliament in order for us to get these bills. So this just shows the power of having women representation at all levels. For example, as we're talking, Malawi now has the Marriage and Divorce Family Relations Act, which raised the marriage age from 15 to 18. All along marriage age was 15. But once we had more members of parliament, women members of parliament, they were able to lobby uh, and the uh, age, uh, marriage age was increased from 15 to 18. HIV AIDS Act of 2017, the Domestic Violence Act of May 2006, the Child and Protection Act, the Wills and Inheritance Act, the Land Act, the Gender Equality Act, all these have been done during the time that we've seen an increase in the number of women representatives in the House. So I'm just trying to share with you the importance of increasing representation of women in all spheres, and in particular instance, uh, increasing the number of uh, women in Parliament. It has helped our country to ensure that these very important bills are passed in the House. We've also, uh, with time, managed to lobby with the Minister of Health to actually include family planning as a budget line on its own. Before having uh, a lot of members, uh, women members of parliament in the house, this was not even considered as an important budget line for the Minister of Health. But members of parliament, the women members of parliament were able to lobby with the ministry and as we are talking, we do have a budget for family planning. So this is just showing the importance of increasing the number of representation of women in different spheres. Women are now able to conduct oversight functions on implementation of gender-related laws because we have more women in parliament. Before, the men would never uh, take their time to check whether the budget uh, um, actually in line with the gender laws. Women representation has also helped us to actually have a lot of advocacy within parliament to ensure that national budgets are gender responsive, tailored towards addressing the practical and strategic needs and interests of individuals from different social groups, regardless of sex, age, class, ethnicity, and location. Distinguished participants and honorable members, in conclusion, women representation and political inclusion in socioeconomic and political good is a political good in itself. It is a denominator for democracy and gender equality. Democracy requires participation of all citizens, including women and the youth. When women voice are left out, the world will end up unfair and unequal power sharing between men and women. This results in unequitable social policies and unfair political processes. This conference is here to emphasize the importance of female representation in public and political affairs. Most importantly, the conference identifies and addresses barriers to meaningful political inclusion of women by building sustainable, enabling environment for women's participation in public and political affairs. The conference will also promote an active dialogue among stakeholders and formulate strategies to close the gender gap in politics. 
with a view to create a better world for women everywhere. Having said this, I would now want to leave you with a quote from Melissa Etheridge, who said, and I quote, you are more powerful than you know, end of quote. Honorable members, this is a very powerful quote that all of us as women need to reflect on. We are more powerful than we think. Let us occupy our space. We are not pushing anybody out, but we are only occupying our space. We are only claiming what belongs to us. And by claiming what belongs to us, and by us occupying our space, that's the only way the world is going to see a lot of change. And I urge you all women to take up your space, and I urge you all to be courageous, to be bold, and to know that for the world to move, it needs us. We are 52% of the population, and no decision should be made without us, because we are 52%, and that's why we need the numbers in whatever positions that we have, be it in the political sphere, be it in the executive, we need the women to be there because it is our space. And let us rise up and reclaim our space. Honorable members, thank you very much for your attention.